You buy a new piece of equipment for use in the radio shack, like this Samsung monitor. You turn it on, then you turn on the radio, and you get greeted with a horrendous RF hash right across the shortwave spectrum. What are you going to do? Well, here's one way I solved this particular problem. As many of you will know, I enjoy listening to Weak Signal DX on the short wave bands. So I try to be very careful about what equipment I bring into this area that might radiate radio frequency interference, or RFI, across the high frequency bands. Unfortunately, RFI is a common issue with so much electric gear these days, especially with consumer grade gadgets. And much of the problem relates to low cost switch mode power packs that are being supplied with the gear. Now, I wanted to add a new monitor to the radio shack to uh, hook up to my laptop computer. Now, this Samsung model is not fancy, it's at the cheaper end of the range. And it was even cheaper because the retail store that was selling it was going out of business. So it was at a price I just couldn't refuse. But when I got it home and turned it on, the RFI coming out of this thing was very high. Way too high to be of any use in the radio shack when the receivers were running. On the FTDX3000, the hash sounded something like... <laughs> it was running at around S8 on the signal strength meter. And only the strongest signals were breaking through the noise. Now, over the years, I've acquired quite a few ferrite clips, clamps and toroids, which are really useful as chokes in reducing RF hash from electronic gear. For example, I've got them uh, on the Wi-Fi range extender here in the shack, on the power supply for the extender, on my Cat5 and uh, Cat6 cables, uh, some audio leads, antenna leads and so on. They are really handy and helpful in uh, keeping RFI out of my receivers. So with this new monitor, I tried putting on both the clip-on ferrite and different types of toroids on both the power lead coming from the power socket to the power pack and from the power pack to the plug that goes into the back of the monitor. So I had ferrite on both ends of the power pack. Now... <laughs> it made virtually no difference to the S8 hash that I was hearing in the receiver. It seems that the power pack had very poor, well perhaps no shielding at all, and was radiating away right inside the little black box itself. So I mulled over this for a while, and while I was sitting here thinking about it, I suddenly realised that I have all these lovely no-hash power supplies sitting on the radio desk right here in front of me. Perhaps they could be harnessed to solve the problem. As long as I could find out how much voltage and current the monitor required to power up. So a quick look at the tiny specs printed on the back of the power pack revealed that its output was rated at 14 volts and 1.7 amps. Those specs were also confirmed on the back of the monitor itself <laughs> in somewhat larger writing. Uh, so, no problem, I could supply that. For the job, I used the Diamond GSV 3000 regulated power supply, which is rated up to comfortably 15 volts and can go a little bit higher. You can see that on the right-hand side, the big terminals can drive up to 34 amps, and these extra terminals on the left-hand side are for uh, smaller equipment demands that can also provide current up to about 6 amps. Perfect. So I grabbed the power pack from the monitor, I cut off the lead at the output of the pack, leaving me with just the lead in and the plug that goes into the back of the monitor. Then I stripped some plastic covering off the leads and connected them to the terminals of the diamond supply, making sure that the center connector of the plug went to the positive terminal of the supply. 
Now, a bit of a warning here. Plugs on electrical gear may vary in their polarity. Always check first to uh, ensure which part of the plug is positive and which is negative. Don't just assume that the socket's centre pin will always be positive. Check first. And check that the leads you are connecting are going to the right terminals. A simple continuity tester or multimeter can help here. Anyway, I connected the monitor to the diamond power supply, turned it on, and the monitor worked just fine. Turning on the shack receivers revealed that the RF hash had completely disappeared. Wonderful! Now I have no further need for this terrible power pack. This thing is going in the rubbish. Power packs are notorious for radiating RFI, but if designed properly, they don't have to be bad. I read somewhere that, uh, that in some of the cheap power packs, the manufacturer had the circuit boards designed to include the extra components necessary for filtering out the hash. But when one consumer opened up the power pack, the board was actually missing those components. There were just holes in the circuit boards where the extra components should have been. The supply would have worked, but the manufacturer could save some money by not putting in the necessary extra components to stop the RFI. So there might have been a cost saving of, say, 40 cents for the missing components in every board, which might not seem much. But if you're making millions of these power packs, that's a big saving to the manufacturer. But it can create some serious RFI problems for us users. Anyway, back to the monitor. The absence of RFI hash on the radios now revealed something else. Some type of parasitic oscillation or carrier was appearing from about 10 megahertz up to past 30 megahertz and would get stronger the higher I went up in frequency. These unwanted carriers were about every 21, 22 kilohertz and were varying in strength. On the signal strength meter, some of these parasitic carriers were around S3 or S4, while others were S6 or 7. It seemed to be especially bad in the range around 17 to 21 megahertz. Apparently, I couldn't hear these before because the RF hash coming out of the Samsung power pack was louder and as I mentioned earlier was registering around an S8 on the meter. So these unwanted carriers were being covered up by the hash. Once I got rid of the hash I could hear all these carriers. So after some more contemplation I decided virtually on a whim that perhaps I could put some ferrite on the monitor lead connected to the diamond supply. I found one of the loudest parasitic oscillations up around 17 megahertz, I think it was, uh, tuned it up on upper sideband so that its carrier could be loudly heard and slipped on three little ferrite clips. The carrier suddenly reduced in strength from S7 to an S6. Adding a few more clips dropped it down to S4. And finally, adding ferrite clips all along the lead, right up to the plug into the monitor, reduced this strong carrier down to an S1. And most of the other weaker parasitic carriers had disappeared. Samsung had not done a proper job in circuitry protection inside the monitor itself, lacking proper shielding or proper filtering, who knows. And it almost seemed like the actual power lead-in out of the uh, monitor was acting like a radiating antenna for these parasitic oscillations or carriers until I choked them off with ferrite. Anyway, I now have a very useful monitor for the radio shack that's not going to interfere with my enjoyment of weak signal DX. No thanks to Samsung. One final comment before I wrap up this video. Not all ferrite clip-ons and toroids are created equal. You need to consider the right mix and specifications when buying ferrite. Different mixes and different qualities 
uh, will be effective at different frequency ranges. So if your RFI issues are in the high frequency bands, uh, then you need to select the right ferrite that will choke the interference at high frequencies. Most good manufacturers have data charts for their products so that you can check out which product to buy. Furthermore, the quality of product can vary enormously. Much of the cheap ferrite that can be found on eBay is cheap for a very good reason. It's poor quality. The reputable brands uh, like Fairrite are excellent. Or you can check out the large range of products at Amadon and other reliable distributors. High quality ferrite is certainly more expensive. But if you buy the right ferrite or toroid for the right application, you can be pretty certain that those brands will do the job. There's heaps of information on the internet to uh, guide you here. Finally, if you've had some experiences with noisy monitors in the Radio Shack, I'd be delighted if you could tell us about them in the comments below. Because tracking RFI issues and finding solutions is always a challenge. So feel free to share with us your thoughts in the comments section. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to see a thumbs up. I'm not a prolific video maker. Unlike some people, I... I don't put out five or six YouTube videos every week. Life's too short for that. So if you'd like to be notified of when a new video is published, click the subscribe button below. And as always, thanks for watching this video. 73s and good DXT all.